Hey everyone, what is going on? My name Archer Live, and welcome to the most stressful video I've made about Payday 3 ever. I'm, I'm really not overestimating that. This is my full solo stealth overkill walkthrough of No Rest for the Wicked. And let me tell you right now, if you, any of you ever thought DSOD stealth in Payday 2 was hard, you ain't seen nothing. I have literally spent six or seven hours today recording this. I know a few other YouTubers have done solo stealths too. I don't know how easy or hard they found it, but... Starbreeze have excelled in making a very challenging stealth difficulty in Overkill. And especially in the scaling between different difficulties just overall in Payday 3. We'll talk about that later though. Because in the first section of this video, there's a lot of objectives going on. So I've already disabled the power to the security gate. That's something that you can do right out the door, either in that spawn or upstairs. You follow the wires from the, the vault gate door to find out where you're turning it off. And then also found this QR code on a phone. There are a few phone spawns in this section of the map, in the locker room you just saw there, in the IT room I was just in a second ago, and then also in the executive office. So you need to get the key card if the guard's got one, and then also the QR code before you proceed upstairs, because on Overkill you can't get into this room without that QR code. And just one of the things that makes it much more difficult on this map. It's not a big change for that one personally, but it's something extra you've got to do. Now... There are a few different rooms. There's two rooms here that I've walked past, you can see there and there, that were blue and red keycard marked, and also a room on the roof. Two of those three will have objectives in them. It might be the security room, it might be the one you're doing the hacking in now, like I am doing here. Now, I would recommend that you pull the big red lever you saw me do at the start of the heist before going into this room, because if you do, you can do this hack, you can press X on the screen as I did, and then this thing will appear, which tells you the color of the wire you need to hack. A bit like an RFID reader in Payday 2. So if you don't pull a lever first, you won't be able to do that last bit. You'll have to go pull the lever and then come back to figure out the color you need. So it's it's about trying to save time, basically. So I'm going down now to get to the gate. And now you've got these voice commands. I can bring up the chat to remind me of what I pinged. That's why I pinged the color in case I forgot. So we're going here and we're opening this on white. I realize this is a bit top heavy in this stealth, but because I knew it was going to be a lot of waiting around to get the executive and also a lot of vault looting, I wanted to make sure that I got through the first section as fast as possible, basically. So... I realise in like two of the 25 minutes here, there's been a lot of talking, but it will slow down and I'll re-explain everything, don't worry. It's just a very, it's a very well-designed heist. It's very challenging, perhaps I think too challenging on your own, but I can talk about that later. That might just be personal opinion. Anyway, this guard here with the cap, he is Mr. Problem. That's what my nickname is for him now. I just came up with that on the fly. I am putting a micro cam onto this dude, you can see there. You can only do it if he's not looking at you dead in the face, because if you put it on the front of him, when you monitor, you can see what he's facing, where he's going, and it gives you a better ability, basically, to track where this guy's going, because you cannot kill this guard. I mean, you can, but you don't want to, because his pager will keep going off, and you have to keep answering it to stay on top of it. So the basically, the safe thing to do is just not kill him. You have to get used to his spawn. He will walk up and down this staircase, go out onto the roof, and sometimes go onto the middle floor of the bank. He won't come out here ever um, until you get to the very end of the heist where he'll start coming out here and wandering the alleys, but we'll talk about that later. So basically this guy, try and get a camera on him if you have the micro cam unlocked. If you don't, just keep an eye out for him. Do not kill the capped guard. Don't trespass again. So he boots me out here, and then I make him trip up on the doors because I find that hilarious that you can do that in this game. So... Now we're back in. We've got both key cards and we are up to the executive stage. This is where things start to spread out a little bit because there's not as much to do from this point on in the heist, but there's a lot of waiting around, trying to time things, trying to get things sorted. So while we're getting set up here, you can see there's my micro cam on the guard so I can monitor him wherever he goes now. Let's talk through what you've done so far, just to make it clear. So there is a blue key card and a red key card. In the bottom left corner, you can see my HUD. You can see that I've got one with a little red bit on the end of the key card and one with a bit of a blue bit. The blue bit gets you into the security room if you want to take down cams. The red bit gets you into the objective room you've seen me in not too long ago. Now, for me personally, I always take the cams down. You only have two pages on overkill. You have four pages on normal and hard, three on very hard, and two on overkill. So you would probably say to me that I'm an idiot for taking down cameras. But for me personally, there's too many cameras in too many different places that I would rather take down the cam guy. And unlike Payday 2 stealth, in fact... What? What do you want? <laughs> Sorry about that. I need to stop mainlining coffee. <laughs> I want to hear the pager line. I, I love hearing the pager lines. I think Damien in particular is hilarious in this game. But for this one... You have to remember with Payday 3 stealth, you have the search phase after stealth. So if you use all your pages or something else happens, so for example, if you're spotted on a camera and a guard comes to arrest you but you're not there, also if you run out of pages, the search phase will trigger. You're still in stealth, but the guards will break their patterns and be looking for you more consciously, basically. So you can use an extra pager 
to trigger search. Once you use one during search, then you'd be completely screwed. So I could technically have three pages here if I wanted to, but I wanted to get through this without breaking search and I managed to do it. So I'm quite happy with that. Anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to get an eye on some of the guards because we need an executive to get into the vault. There are a couple of executives in the map. There's one marked yellow. The one that's basically closest to you will be marked yellow or the one you most recently mark. So I grabbed him and chucked him into this room while I knew no one was around and tied up his hands. There's a civvy here that I always like to grab and I honestly thought I'd screwed this here because I thought that guard would see. Somehow he didn't. I like to grab that woman and bring her straight into this room here because it's another civvy that's basically taken off the playing board. Whenever you can get civvies moved, do it. And especially in this game where it's much easier to move them about without just launching them with judge shotguns because, I mean, shotgun ragdolls aren't even in this game. It's better because there's a lot of civvies in this bank and I like to keep on top of them as much as I can, basically. So I'm still trying to keep an eye on where the cap guard is and then also trying to figure out where our guard is. Now I knew he'd gone round to the corner and the guard on this floor loops in a circle. So once I know he's gone round into that section, it'll be a while before he comes back to this corridor and I can get this hostage out of here. You can tell this has come from literally, like I said, about six or seven hours of playing this on a loop, getting used to guard patterns and knowing. And I think with the rest of PA3, it's going to be a case of you need to know where the guards are going to be. You need to plan accordingly. Because the stealthiness is executed flawlessly almost, I would say, to the point where you need to know exactly what you're doing or you're going to screw this up. So, we've got the executive. We plant him against this here. He scans his eye. And then as soon as the glow disappears around him, we can grab him again. There should be a code on the manager's computer. Go and this is another thing that's harder on overkill. Now, I've killed the guard down here. He's my second pager because I like to keep this floor completely free and he's the only guard on this floor that roams this area. The cap guard goes to the bottom of the stairs on this floor, but he won't go through the door. So if you keep the door shut, he won't see anything in here within reason unless he peers at something through the glass pane, which can happen. Be conscious of it. I like to put all bodies and civilians in this bathroom because I don't even think in search guards will go in there. So it's a nice safe haven. And especially during search when guards break their patrols, if you happen to get to that phase, you want people hidden in an area they're not going to see. So somewhere like this is a very smart move, in my opinion. So, as I was saying, one of the changes in Overkill is that the manager's computer is in a much more difficult space. That door to your right that I've just walked past is usually where the computer can be. It can also be in that meeting room there. It happens more on the lower difficulties. On the higher difficulties, it's upstairs. And in some of the spawns, you will get a lot of civvies in that room. I'm going to be completely 100 with you. I don't know why I'm saying completely 100, like I'm a vine, viner or something, whatever the word was. God, that was cringe, but I'm not re-recording this whole commentary for the sake of a bad joke. Um, I'm going to keep it completely serious with you lot. If you get like tons of civilians in that room, you're pretty much screwed because you need to be able to deal with the civilians quickly and a guard's probably going to see the civilians unless you take care of the guards up there. And on the amount of pages you've got, you're probably not going to be doing that. So just keep that in mind, basically. Um, you really want the computer to be in a room where there's only a couple of civvies that you can deal with quickly while the guard is not within eye range of them. Because if the guard's within eye range, I mean, you may as well just kiss your playthrough goodbye, as I found out many, many times. So, going into this room, I realised there was only two civilians, and actually one of them is one of the other executives. So he won't even stay in this room. That woman there, she will, but that guy in the black suit, he would move out. However, same theory that I have already. Any civilian you can take care of, you take care of. Because I knew he wasn't going to go anywhere problematic for a minute, I thought I'd move her straight into the security room and tie her hands. Because it's important to remember that if you tie a civilian's hands in this game, once you grab them as a human shield, those binds break. Not quite sure how that works, but it is how it works. You have to re-tie them up if you've already tied them. So, now that executive's the only one left in there. I think I might have tried. Did I try to go in here without getting him? I don't actually know. Because I was worried that the guard would come around the corner and see him as I grabbed him. Because it's all about timing, right? And I'm not in the camera room, so I can't monitor it. So, I, yeah, I did. I went straight for the computer. I think what happens is in a second, he spots me anyway. You have to hack the computer and then press the button again to get the vault code options. But you can see we've got four vault codes. I'll explain to you how they work when we get to the vault, because I think that's going to be a minute yet. It's not. Wow, this was a better playthrough than I remember. I only recorded it an hour ago. I, honestly, the playthroughs are blurred between my brain at this point. I did a full solo stealth about five hours in, and then OBS didn't record any of the sound. So it might be that I'm getting confused between that one and this one. So we get to the vault, and you have a black light which shows you which buttons have been pressed. So you cross-reference that, cross-reference that, sorry, with the codes you've been given, the four options, and work out which one's the correct one. For me here, 7586. And the vault door is opened. Bam. And then we go. So. Now you need to open this lock. Now, when you've done the lock pick, the door doesn't automatically open, but as soon as you open the door, the die packs will start to go off. And this is one of the only things that I don't like about this heist on Solo, is that 
it's not very forgiving with the die packs. You can get four at a push five done if you're quick. As you can see here, I don't quite manage five because I'm a bit fiddly and also very nervous because I've been doing this for, like I said, a really long time. So you could probably do five, but I don't like the value of your loot is compromised because you play on your own. I get it. The game is meant to be played with a team of four, but in Payday 2, you were never penalized for doing a solo stealth. Whereas here, I think you were. Now, there's a bit of a jump cut there because I was not going to make you watch literally three straight minutes of me opening security boxes because I decided that if I was going to get this right, I'd get all the loot. And I think every single time, you will only get two loot bags in here. The volume is very loud on my own, so I'm just going to turn that down while I'm commentating because I'm a very good multitasker. There we go. That's nice. Now I'm not hit, making myself deaf. So now it's all about looting and securing the loot. And this is the section where I can give you a bit more of an overall explanation of objectives. Because like I said, I realized the, the video was a bit front heavy because I was doing a lot of the key things to begin with. Looting is the tough bit of this heist. <laughs> what am I kidding? Most of this is tough. So for the looting section, there are two van spawns. The one that I got is the one I would greatly, greatly suggest you go for. The van parked in the car park. If it's parked on the side of the street on the right end of the spawn then basically you have a risk of civilians constantly running into you while you're moving bags. And it's what happened to me in the in my near first attempt. It was one of the only ones that went semi-well. A bunch of civilians saw me and ruined it, and I got very, very upset. So here, because there were not many civvies in the bank, I'm presuming, they put two out here in the car park. It's all very randomized, and it made it a bit harder to get around, but all you have to do is go around the edge of the car park, and you can start dropping bags off. Except this is no doubt something that Overkill Starbreeze will fix, if you bring one of the bags out of the safe deposit box, the doors just don't open. You have to grab one of the bags that's on the table to begin with. And of course, when this happened to me, I was convinced I was going to have screwed this up. Thankfully, though, movement speed doesn't really change between you wielding and not wielding a bag. I don't think it changes at all. So here, I'm just waiting for the guard to pass so I can get past and start securing the bags. So it's a bit stressful, that bit. So here on out, it's just me going, getting bags, and slowly moving around and dodging. So let's talk a bit about the heist overall and give you my general stealth tips and what I thought, because we literally still have a good 10 minutes, 12 minutes left of this playthrough where I can give you all my advice. So overkill stealth, as I've said, big difference is you've got two pages and you've got the guard that cannot be killed or can be, but you'd be dealing with a lot of pages. So I'm basically terming him as the unkillable guard, a bit like a Captain Winters or something. I haven't really experimented too much with killing him. I don't know whether every time you answer the pager, it counts as a pager. And if you keep going, you break search. I need to experiment more with that. But basically, when I've been playing for this long, your boy was not going to risk it. I'm going to be completely 100 with you. I've got to stop saying 100. Why am I saying that? I literally don't, I, 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 Vine passed me by, man. Why am I making that reference? I don't get it. Anyway, so that's a big thing. Also, you have a few more guards, I think, wandering the area. They did say there was increased security, so that can happen. But in this playthrough in particular, you can see that the cap guard, when I was bouncing between there, he starts wandering around the ground floor and the alley. But he wanders around the send side of the ground floor that I'm not at, so near the IT desk, and then he goes out into the side alley. There's a guard there already, and there's the cap guard. So if you get the escape on the other side of the map, you've got to constantly deal with those two guards. And it's so much more of a headache than this is. Even with two civilians here, this is so much smoother and so much nicer than the other end spawn. So honestly, even though it's not the nicest thing to say in a game where it's like, oh, you can do it no matter what spawns you get. If you get a spawn where the van is not on this side, I would quit and restart. Because another thing to say is with Payday 3, when you load into a lobby, if you restart, just restart straight up in the lobby, Everything will stay the same in terms of spawns. Key cards will be on the same guards. The phone will be in the same place. The rooms will be in the same place. All of it. The only things I've noticed that changed are sometimes the guards will start in different places, but that's the only real notable change that I've spotted. Um, and even then, it's only one or two or three maybe possible options as to where they spawn, and usually it stays the same. So if you are struggling but you like the layouts, keep restarting, keep getting used to it before you pass. If you exit to main menu and then go back into the heist, you'll get a new layout of things. So that's how you reset it if you want to get a different spawn. Don't keep hitting restart because you'll keep getting the van in the same place. Quit and go back into the heist if you want to fix that. Additionally, on overkill, you need to secure more bags. So I think on normal, you need to secure three, maybe four, and then it scales up from there. It might be four, five, six, seven bags across the difficulties. But on overkill, you need to secure seven bags. So by that point, because there's only 10 in the heist overall, eight in the uh, room, and then two in the deposit boxes, I was like, I may as well get all loot. And then it makes for an even cooler video. You know what I mean? But for me, it just feels like a lot of the objectives have made a lot harder on Overkill. Adding in the extra QR code step doesn't make things too much harder, but it's an extra thing. The cap guard, the reduced pages is the big thing. Um, but also just getting used to your spawns moving around, that's a very important part. You need to get used to the map and be able to adapt with what you're given. 
and I think that's the most challenging thing. There's a lot of civilians in this map, and I think that's also the biggest problem. Like I said, if you get that security room, uh, the computer, sorry, in the executive office where there's a bunch of civvies in there, it pretty much screws you. And I really don't like when heists do that. Um, it's one of my only real criticisms of this map. It's like Big Bank, because in Big Bank, when you're trying to do the computer hack, on the top floor, you've got much more of a chance of civilians spotting you. It's very hard to get through that section with the computer on the top floor um, as opposed to the bottom floor. And I feel like that's replicated a little bit here, which I don't want to say it sucks because I think that that's being a bit of a drama queen, but I think it just adds a bit too much challenge. I don't mind it being challenging, but I think at some point it goes a bit too far over the line, and I think it does that here. I think with solo stealth, something should be made a tiny bit easier. If the game recognizes that you're on your own, it should maybe give you a couple less civvies in a room or something like that. Just something to make it a bit more solo friendly. But the big thing for me is the die packs. I really don't like that the die packs just have to go off on some of the bags because you're on your own. That sucks. It really does. The thing is, I don't have. I haven't fully studied how much of a difference it makes to the income. In the real world, if you were getting bags with die on them, I mean, they'd be worth next to nothing. So I don't imagine they're worth tons in this heist. But, nah. If that's the only real big issue I've got with stealth, then they're not doing too bad. You know what I mean? They're not doing too bad. So, I'll let them off. I'll let them off. But yeah, so, you've got the two key cards, blue for security room, red for the objective room. You've got the lever you need to pull near the start, and then you've also got the phone for the QR code. They're the things you need to be looking for at the start, and then working your way up from there. Objective-wise, there really isn't too much to do in this heist. It's quite a small map, with all being said, especially com compared to the art gallery. I mean, I didn't play much of the art gallery stealth. I didn't beat it in stealth when I played it in Sweden, but that map is a lot bigger than this one. So, as challenging as this is, I think that this is a good one to actually have given in the beta if you to get used to stealth. And that's the thing, right, is that it's so different between difficulties that I think it works really, really well. If you play this on normal or hard, I think normal and hard are pretty similar in terms of the difficulty. It said in the beta that Titan cameras uh, activate on hard difficulty. They don't. I was worried there I'd been spotted. Thankfully, I hadn't. I got a bit too, uh, bit too fast there. Um, but I think it was a visual bug. The Titan cameras kick in on very hard. On very hard, you get Titan cameras and you get three pages as opposed to four. And then on overkill, you get the guard with the infinite pages and you get two pages rather than four total. So they're the things to bear in mind. For me, I really like that Payday 3, it's going to be tailored more, I think, to different people's different difficulties and how much they want to be challenged. If you really can't be bothered with overkill stealth, you're going to have a much more comfortable, much more enjoyable time playing on normal or hard, or if you want like a decent challenge, very hard. Overkill, to me, feels like it's not just for people who are good at DSOD Payday 2 stealth, it's for people with a bit of, you know, like, uh, masochism, <laughs> honestly. It's like you enjoy being punished, because let me tell you, I felt like I was being punished extensively playing this. And it certainly didn't make things better when the AI kept following me around here and then Wolf and Dallas got in my face. <laughs> Wolf just stood directly where the guard was and I was like, bruh, I need to see where he is. Which is the only other small thing. And I'm guessing this is designed, but marking a guard, you can't see them as easily through some surfaces now. Which, you know, maybe they've done that on purpose to make it harder, but I kind of wish you could see the guard through surfaces because on this game now, you can only mark one thing at a time. I think you can get skills to increase it, but... Yeah, you know. Now, I didn't leap over the wall. I don't know if you saw that. Feel free to rewind and check it. But I saw a bit of black hair poking up on the wall. I'm trying to spot it here, but I couldn't find it. Um, when I check in a minute, I don't see a guy there. But later on, I do see him on the bench. So there must have been another civilian that was getting up and sitting down on that bench. So that's what I was basically trying to keep an eye out for. I was trying to see if there was an easier way to get around where I didn't have to wait for this guard. But no, nope. patience is key. And that's the other key thing. You need to do a lot of waiting in this heist. Whether it's waiting for a good chance to get the executive, waiting to loot. I mean, half of this gameplay is me looting the bags. You know? Like, I get the actual stealth objective is pretty much done within about 10 minutes. But the rest of it, it drags it out. And if you have a teammate with you, overkill stealth will be a lot easier. Because I'm pretty sure they can hack all the computers, so someone could go into the civvy room with all the civvies there even and get the vault code. But on top of that, you can move bags in casing mode. So you would have a much easier time running around with bags than I'm having right now in solo. So honestly, I, I think it's interesting that with Payday 3, the optimal way to play stealth might be with two people rather than one. And that's really interesting to me. Obviously, optimal does not mean the coolest or the most impressive. That's still solo stealth. And in this game, far more than Payday 2. You can pull a heist off in solo stealth. I'm not saying this to shoot my own horn. Genuinely, you've got a lot of skill. You've got a lot of skill. You've got a lot of patience. And you also have a lot of map knowledge. So to anyone who is thinking... 
you know, should I be trying solo stealth and overkill? I genuinely recommend you try the lower difficulties first. Get used to the map and build yourself up. There is no shame in going, do you know what? I'm not jumping to the highest difficulty. I want to get used to things. I don't care what anyone else tells you. You might have someone go, oh, but if I'm going to do it first time on overkill without trying the difficulties, I'm even better. Yeah, well, you know what? If you do it in the end, that's what matters, right? I don't care how you do it. You just get it done. So this is bag number seven. Once I've secured this, that is enough to leave. But of course, I want to secure everything, so that's why we're here for a couple more minutes to finish this off. Oh, let me tell you, I was I was so stressed. I was so stressed at this point. It literally gave me a headache doing this. That's how stressed I was over this whole thing. But it's a phenomenally built heist. It really, really is. And like I said, I only have a couple of tiny issues with it with civilians and die packs. And if they don't change any of that, you know what? I'm fine with it. I honestly am fine with it. Because they never changed the civilian thing for the top floor on Big Bank. Or maybe they did. And maybe it was even harder when at launch. I don't know. I was on console, so I don't really know too much about what Big Bang looked like at start compared to now. Maybe it didn't change at all. I don't know. But. And it's also nice to be able to say this is on console, in case it wasn't 100% obvious. Nice, smooth, 60 FPS on Xbox Series X. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, of course it goes down to 59 when I say that. That was to torture me, clearly. So there you go. So I could escape now, but being, like I said, the masochist that I apparently was, I was like, no, we're getting all the bags. So that's what I did. Went for the others. But I think that's pretty much everything I need to tell you about this heist. Like I said, there is the cap guard. He will wander around. Um, if I can, I wasn't sure if at some point I saw him. I don't know. Um, but I'll just point it out now to be completely clear with you. Um, down the corridor there and around the corner to the right, the guard will be sometimes there and then he'll go out the door and into the back alley and wander up and down alongside a base guard that's normally there. And occasionally that guard's been stood um, behind the fence that's directly behind me now, over to the left now on the camera. There's a guard over there. He will sometimes see you. He's the one going up and down the alley that will sometimes collide with the cap guard, which is what I mean when I say you've got basically two guards to deal with on that side and why that spawn is worse than this one. So I suppose that's my only other real criticism. The other van spawn I don't think is particularly nice. I think there's too much of a risk of civilians wandering around and also a bit more of an unfair disadvantage that there's two guards to deal with there as opposed to one here. Because, like, I assumed the cap guard would wander around wherever your van is, but clearly that's not the case because he didn't do that here. He just stayed on the other side. He just goes on that side regardless of where the van is. So, if anything, that might get changed post-launch. I would not be surprised if it did. I hope not. Obviously, it'd make the heist a lot harder, but who knows? All right, two bags left to go. I think that pretty much covers everything I want to say, though. There's, there's a lot to this heist, even though it's a small map with small objectives. A lot to talk about, a lot to say that I like, and only a few things to criticize and say that I dislike. But really, really good fun um, to get used to this, even if, like I said, it stressed the ever-living hell out of me. Genuinely, my headache's coming back a little bit just thinking about it. <laughs> it's mad. It's really mad. It is honestly mad. But... I would like to know in the comment section below, if you're still here, if you're still watching towards the end, have you beaten this on stealth? If so, on what difficulty? You tell me normal, I've got no shame for you, because it's still a bit of a challenge even on normal. It's easier to get used to and you'll get through it a lot quicker, but let me know. I'd be intrigued to know what the highest difficulty you beat it on stealth would be. And before anyone asks, no, I've not beat this heist on overkill. I'm not insane. Um, I will be eventually, but I don't think I'll be doing it in the base. I'll be completely like real with you. Nearly said 100, stop myself. I think I'll probably do that in the full release. Get a good squad together and really plan it through with 21 skill points. Because here I'm only running 6. So, and I realise I didn't mention that until now. I will slap the skills in at the end. I, I realise I didn't do that. So, at the very end, I'll just put a screenshot in. Or I'll put it on screen now. Just so you can see what my screenshot, my skills are. Just right here. There you go. Nothing too major. I literally ran with what I could based on having only 6 skill points at level 16. So, with 21, this would obviously get a lot easier. The big thing for me was uh, being able to, you know, run around and get rush when I was near civvies. Anyway, allow allow me to introduce present time Troy, realizing he'd finally beaten the heist. Oh, let's go! Let's go! Oh, I never have to play this again during the beta. Thank everything. I'm so done with this difficulty. It is too hard. Ah! Yeah, I told you I had a headache, so... That was me cheering, knowing that the headache was worth something. <laughs> it's, it's mad. 
But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is the full solo stealth on overkill difficulty for no rest for the wicked in the Payday 3 beta. I'll probably do an updated version when the full game comes out, so pray for me for that. But thank you all very much for watching. I'll be back very soon with some more videos on the Payday 3 beta or just things overall. I haven't decided what else I'm going to do other than an overall thoughts on the beta video. If there's anything else you want to see, let me know. But apart from that, we'll leave it there. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you very soon with some brand new content. Until then, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you all soon.